Hello, Monsters of Man here, and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 3 and the third part of my Kugath campaign, where last time... Well, last time we had some struggles, didn't we? We had a few struggles. Um, we've managed to secure our, our first province, only just. We lost Glutport to the Dwarves, managed to retake it, and then we lost Sornvrak Mountain to Zinch, who just decided to take it. But we've managed to resecure that as well. So that's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Nurglings. So there we go. That's what we're going to do. Because now we need to move on to Crack... Karak Dumb. That's what we need. Now the only problem with Karak Dumb is that uh, its its capital settlement is owned by a Chaos faction. And that means Chaos corruption here is going to be very high, and that means control is going to be very low. Which means we're likely going to have a lot of rebellions. So, I'm tempted to maybe go... I mean, it's like you're going to have a rebellion anyway. Right, we're going to... Right, we're going to... Yeah, we're, we're going to head straight for... I mean, I'm hoping the public order is going to be an issue for them. I hope. Maybe. I don't know how many dwarves we've got to deal with. But I think we need to move sooner rather than later. Although I would like to give my... Ah, crap. Already? No, oh, mind you. Why are you taking attrition? No, because of chaos? That's good. What was... Wait, what was that? Oh, we got a Chaos Cultist. Cultist and we've got a quest. Our quest battle for the Necrotic Missiles. Kugas, past dealings with dwarves have not gone well. Diminutive cave dwellers have an iron constitution, which stubbornly resists Nurgle's blessings, in spite of the Plague Father's endless experiments. What is needed is a large quantity of test subjects so that Kugas can divine what lies at the root of this resistance. Once this is isolated, he can formulate a new wave of plagues of such virulence that even the dwarves' senseless that word will crumble. No, I will not shame my clan. Is that, that that's a lot of quarrelers? Excellent, lovely. It's just a shit ton of quarrelers. Um, do I? St I think I need to. I need to. I need. I need to replenish. I need to replenish. Um, maybe I can whack something. Uh, we really want mucus to run, so let's go with something like that. We could do fever as well, so that way uh, we're increasing that. But every time it spreads, we'll get 150 income, which is quite nice. It's only going to cost us 25 infection points. So that's quite nice. I'm hoping the dwarves leave me alone. I'm also hoping that Kislev don't reach the coastline anytime soon. I will. Yes. So this is our cultist of Nurgle. He is our melee character. I know he doesn't look like he should be, but he is. Don't worry about it. He looks a little scrawny, but he is fine. Uh, he comes with basically combat skills. He can damage walls and hinder replenishment. He also comes with this nice little ability. So basically he can summon in uh, units of plague bearers and also a great unclean one, which is quite nice. Uh, so yeah, he's your, he's your basic sort of like melee character. So we're going to bring him down to join us, because nothing better than having someone to clock people in the heads, especially enemy characters. I always like to make the cultist into sort of like a beefy, well, I say beefy, but scrawny. He's a little scrawny boy. He's, he's not well, bless him. Okay, this is looking better. Oh, you've gone and wheedled yourself in there, haven't you? I think we're just going to have to go for it. I think we're just going to have to go for it. No way around it. It's just just got to go for it. Let's give you some melee defense. That'll make you a little bit more tanky. I don't like the... Oh, I do not like that. I do not like that. That's a lot of fucking dwarves. However, I do not want you replenishing. So stop that right now. Hang on, what else have you got in there? Uh, oh, grudge thrower. Lots of shit. Okay, you're gonna go back to where we were? Good, thank you. Um, you know what we should do? We should do that one, because that causes attrition while under siege. And can do that one. If we do that, I'm hoping it will in spreads. And, uh, oh, you've got an entire stack as well. Well, this just gets better and better, doesn't it? Oh, he also increases mobility. So that's quite nice. Nice to have a little bit of extra extra speed and have, uh, have him on board. Uh, right, this is not ideal because we've got two enemies with 
two stacks, not to mention these guys I'm hoping aren't going to be... I swear to God, if I see a fleet coming in from behind me, I'm going to lose my shit. Uh, cyst growth. Might, I mean, we don't even have those at the moment. Uh, let's get... For Sundity. Oh, this is quite nice. So this is the army ability. So as we get damaged, we, we sort of build up points. Kind of like the Demon Prince. When he does damage, he builds up points. And then you can use these abilities. This one is a chain regeneration ability. So basically it heals your units. And it will jump from one unit to another up to five. And replenish quite a lot of their health. So that is actually really nice. So I'm going to grab that one. Because it's only going to take two turns. I'm hoping our plague jumps and hits these guys. Because if it does, they'll start taking more attrition damage. Come on. Oh, what's this? Within a dark ravine, your tally men sight the pristine corpse of a colossal ancient Stegidon. The great lizard's presence here is a mystery, but nonetheless, it shall soon become a glorious tribute to Nurgle's love. We can haul it into the sunlight, which will give us weird plate. It's up to life with constructing patterns. Many attacks against weave will harness someone that... Oh, okay. Well, stuff it with maggots. Now, I, I think... This, I mean, the sun considers we've already got 100, 100 Nurgle corruption, so I think we're just going to get the... Uh, the plate. Let's do that. And I'm going to give that to Kugath because he probably needs it. Okay, so the nice thing is the settlement has actually picked up the plague, which means that their garrison should be taking a lot more damage now. One would hope. I feel like we're going to just have to like siege them down for a bit because may maybe I'm being too cautious, but also I need to worry about you. Do I just go for it? Make them rot. I'm going to give it another turn, and then we're going to have to deal with the ogres, and then hope that no one else is attacking us at the same time. Oh, we've got the plague back. Good. Uh, and that also means it's, it's jumped again, which means we get some more money, which is also good. And the ogres have yet to move, so that's also good. We've got the heal. That's good. This garrison is taking a crap ton of damage. Which is really good. Sinesh is in Ascendance. That's bad. And we've got a quest. And that's fine. That is fine. Let's get... I, like, so this is going to increase the chance of plague spreading by 2%. Which I do like. Because the more you, more you spread your plagues... The more you build up your plague points and you unlock things. And what the hell happened there? Maybe these guys killed the ogres? Beastmen, hang on. I need to talk to the beastmen. Oh, maybe they did. Maybe corn helped me. Did corn help me? Pyrrhic victory. Okay, I think we can take them now. I do. I, I, I've seen this settlement a few times, but I just. It just looks so good. It looks like a dwarf settlement, doesn't it? It's way better than just having just a wall and some streets. There's actual sort of, you know, elevation to it, which I really like. It's good. I, I do like the new settlement mats. I, look, I like the new settlement battles as well. So advancing towards the entrance the settlement. The enemy garrison has already taken some damage, which means they are significantly less effective in combat than they would be, which is just as well because there's a lot of the buggers. I mean, they still outnumber us quite significantly. Admittedly, we only count one in every, what, like six Nurglings? So, you know, we, we, could, we could increase that number a little bit. The Furies... And our rock flies already taking out some of those missile units. The Fury's actually surprising me. They usually, I usually let them die very early on and never bother replacing them. But uh, you know what? They're actually, actually not too bad. I'll give it to them. Taking out that, the artillery in the previous episode, I was like, oh, that was pretty good. That was not bad. And uh, they've actually been surprising me ever since. So uh, there we go. The Nurglings advancing because they're a little bit faster than their Plague Bearer Brethren. Scuttling up the hill towards additional missile units. It's right. There's a lot of positions here where you could put missile units to defend your settlements. It's, uh, it's quite nasty, actually. Meanwhile, our Plague Toads have had 
no resistance whatsoever. They've come up right behind from the uh, the back of the settlement, and they are now taking these objective points here. A few units now moving to intercept them, but nothing too bad. We should be able to deal with those. Nuglings finding a little bit of a, a tougher foe in these dwarf warriors with great weapons. I mean, these guys do have 32 melee defense, which is pretty good. Not to mention the 23% physical resistance. And of course, Kugath is helping out his little, his little chitty, little chitties, little kitties. He's helping him out. I like how the, the great unclean one keeps calling them, my children. It's like Nurgle's just one big happy family. Admittedly, they're covered in, in ooze, but I mean, I've got a child and he's constantly covered in ooze. You can only understand as drop considerably after you've had a child. You start off with like, oh god, no, this couldn't couldn't deal with any of this. And then within within a year, you're just like, oh, I'm covered in poo and I don't even care anymore. I'm so tired. So they're blocking our advance up this ramp. Meanwhile, the other side of the settlement, we have secured the supply location, which has knocked down their towers. And we're mopping up the last few survivors. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the blood pack. I never thought I was really that bothered about the lack of blood, but uh, I am finding it a little bit distracting, the fact that people aren't exploding into jam. Like, where's my jam? I need my jam. Still, Cuddles is having a good time. He's finding lots of friends to give give Huggles to, aren't you, Cuddles? Yeah, he's accidentally killed 28 of them so far. I, I mean, yeah, accidentally. The Rockfly is taking a little bit of damage there. Doing some death head shots. You can see a lot of these dwarves now routing. But uh, still, some dwarves holding the line and not letting us through. For Sunderty has been dropped, which means we're getting some nice little heals there. This won't replace missing you members of a unit, but because Nurgle's, Nurgle's units tend to have a crap ton of health, so it's actually pretty effective. You can just heal your boys up, and it doesn't really... You, you know, unlike the undead, who have fairly small health pools, and so you do need to replace their numbers, Plaguebearers have, you know, 10k health. Over 10k health. So each one of the plague bearers has a lot of a lot of hit points. It's a hundred in a unit. So they're they're tanky boys. Our plague toads have reached the city centre and trying to deal with the enemy lords. They've definitely dealt with the grudge thrower who managed to get one kill. Uh, it's not particularly effective. To be honest, I probably, would, I probably wouldn't put it in the city centre. I would probably put it here. If you put, this, you put the artillery here, you could fire down the hill. That'd be amazing. Really, really good. Plague Toads have taken their objective and now heading it, but they're being blocked by a bloody... Well, some dwarves, for one, but they're punting those all over the place. Um, but a barricade is being constructed in their face. However, Cuddles is looting the rest of the forces towards the city centre. He just cannot wait to find more friends to give hugs to. He's going to love them and hug them and call them George. He's done that with 40 people so far. Well, dwarves anyway. Well, dwarves people asking the real questions. That's what this channel's all about, asking the real questions and talking about being covered in poo. Ah, that is a noble campaign. You know what you're getting into. So we're converging on the settlement centre. You can see it's starting to it started to flip to our side. More and more of our forces are moving in. And uh, as that happens, it's going to flip. A few of the dwarves still causing us some issues. There's some quarrelers up on this barricade here. And some dwarves that have fled the battle are actually coming back. The rockfly is having taken quite a lot of damage there. Are trying to deal with uh, all of these problems. Ooh, that... That, that unit of quarrelers just got exterminated. The rock fly... I mean, normally flies are pretty pretty fragile, but the rock flies are very tanky. They can soak up a lot of punishment. But it does look like army losses are starting to mount up. We've captured the settlement centre. 
and the enemy general is being cuddled to death. You know what? I was a bit sniffy about the Furies, but they are they're doing some good shit. I like the fact that you can actually see the bonuses of uh, rank do now. Which is nice. I'd like we had to see that. Uh, good. Okay. Got some cash. Got some experience. Got some campaign movement range. And campaign line of sight. And they've received the plague. Blessed are the Nurgles. Hello. Are you... Uh, yes. Okay. That's fine. We can deal with you now. I'm actually tempted. Uh, you know what I would like is a heal. I wouldn't like to be able to drop heals, so let's go with... Um, let's go Curse of Leper, then we can go Evasion, and then Fleshy Abundance. My That's the plan! I'm going to grab Miasma of Pestilence, so we can upgrade cast that one, and I'm going to increase our mobility because that's too good, and we'll get Eye of the Gods as well. This place is not going to be super happy because of all of the uh, corn corruption, but we will get a public order building to try and uh, lower that lower that slight issue. God, our replenishment here is terrible. How's things going around here? Everyone fine? Cracker Drack staying in, their, staying in their zone? Yes? Why are you here? Uh, mostly. I was hoping you'd give me some money. I think you might give me some money in a minute. Beastman factions seem to be loaded, and... Oh, you were literally all the way there, were you? Okay, well... Well, not much we can do about that. Wind of Pain? That's when you've been eating the old baked beans, isn't it? Right, so I am going to run back here. You'll be fine for a minute. We will untax you because you're not making it much money anyway, and it will make you slightly less sad. Four turns. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. That is going to cost a shit ton of money to repair. We're going to have to do it anyway. Oh, God. Would everyone just leave me alone? Like, I'm just a big fat Plague causing monstrosity. I'm not the bad guy. A vast bubo, the size of a fortress with a stench like an open sewer in high summer, spouts suddenly upon the earth. A mass of slithering, slippery shadows are visible underneath its greasy surface. How best to show gratitude for grandfather's noxious gift. We can nurture the growth or burst the growth. Uh, let's nurture it. That was. Is it just. Just growth in oh, all provinces. Oh, good. All provinces. That's, that's good. Okay, let's do this. They set up a camp there. Let's lay an ambush and see if we can we can get that. I'm going to upgrade Glut Port. Stormfrack Mount is, is not having a good time. Three hammers. Who the fuck are three hammers? And oh, you're going for Crarak. You know what? I'm not so bothered about that. Because it's riddled with, with corn corruption. So let's cancel you. Because we're not going to be able to build that. And I'm going to attack the forts. So that will draw in the reinforcements, which is fine. Really? You're oh, God. Tell you what. The ultra resolve in Warhammer 3 is, is incredibly bloodthirsty. It is... I mean, even for ultra resolve, badly tuned. Oh well. So this is an ogre camp. Ogres can put camps wherever they like. And it counts as basically a brand new settlement. It can't be placed too close to an existing settlement, but, effectively, anywhere else in a province, you can stick an ogre camp. An ogre camp counts as an ogre's sort of provincial capital. Um, any other settlement they capture is counted as a minor settlement. It's basically just an outpost. And their camps are counted, and they, I think they can have up to five or six ogre camps. 
And you can remove them, you can move them, you can upgrade buildings in them. That's where you recruit all your best units, all that kind of thing. And uh, if you attack an ogre camp, you get the ogre camp battle map, which is like this. Uh, it's just like a normal siege map. You can build towers and there are control points and all that kind of good stuff. So we're instantly going to start off by attacking some Noblars. And they're bringing the Furies in from behind for that lovely rear attack. There we go. Take that, you big nosed bastards. And the Oak Camp's got some lovely features, such as like a big pit full of lunch, I would assume, or at least a snack. It's actually pretty defensive. Like, you've got these. Uh, it's, it's. It's just a nice little map, to be honest. It just. It looks like an Ogre Camp, and I like it. What I don't know is if it looks bigger if you upgrade it. I haven't quite. Don't quite know that yet. Either way, we're just breaking straight into... I mean, it's defended by Noblars. There's literally two proper ogres in this entire battle, and they are the generals. So we have uh, Gargus, a tyrant, over there, and uh, we also have Gragas. Gragas and Gragas. They're Gragas and Gragas. That's the Jojo and Grand Grand theme tune. I was, like, I was like, what did I just sing then? And it's Jojo and Grand Grand, so there we go. That's because I watch way too much children's TV. So in comes a tyrant. He's quite a tanky boy. His, his stats are pretty good. He's going to be a bit of a threat for us. We're going to send our cultists and the counter. Crow, Botherer and Counter are going to uh, try and engage the ogre tyrant. He's a big boy, though. And unfortunately, Crow Botherer is a... Scr oh, Crow Botherer. You need to get some meat on your bones, buddy. Oh, guys. That's it. Get in there, mate. Get in there. That's it. Give him a couple, good, good, good couple of whacks there. That's it. Yeah. Getting stuck in. That's what I like. Counter. Are you going to do anything? You're still counting. You're going to gonna hit him? No? Okay. We'll get some Plague Bearers to help. Because God knows you probably need a hand. Okay. And here come the Noblars. Hordes of the little buggers. Look at them. Noblars are basically weedier goblins. Look at them all massing in there. Wouldn't it be a shame if someone dropped, say, a breath spell on them? It would be. It would be a shame. Yes, it would be. Oh, well, there goes half their health. That was, uh, that was Kargath. That was brutal. He got 42 kills. I don't know if any of those were actually Noblars. How much damage value did you do? I mean... Yeah, that's, that's not bad. That is not bad. Cuddles and some Nurglings have taken a supply point over here. And this has annoyed second Gragas. Or is this first Gragas? Who knows? I'll tell you what, what's this buff he's got? What does this do? Oh, Siege Defense. Oh, right, yes. Because that's what he's got from the uh, the key location, the centre of the settlement. Get extra melee defence and leadership buffs. Cuddles going in there. You know what? Cuddles is actually probably better in melee combat than our heroes. Why? I don't know. Cuddles is just an absolute legend. The Nurglings helping out there as well, which is very nice to see. It is, rather. Okay, second Gragas, or maybe first Gragas, whichever way you want to count it, has been... Mostly dealt with, although he's taken a big chunk of health out of the counter. Still, he is surrounded, and he's done not much damage. The Noblars all fleeing combat, because they're Noblars. That is uh, pretty much traditional. We're going to chase them off a little bit. We'll send the Plague Toes to go and harass them. And over here, yeah, Cuddles is actually doing fairly well against this this garrison lord but we are going to drop a a little debuff on him a little damage spell that is it virulent something i can't remember what it's called but either way it's a very good i mean especially if, if you have um spirit leech and that spell on the same on the same character their health just drops like a stone rancid visitations there we go it literally like creates a big old ball of pus and then drops it on their head and then their health just and then if you, you know hit them with spirit leech as well and uh, they're losing quite a lot of health every single second and 
And looks like he's going to go down. And with the destruction of the reinforcements, the Noblars are returning to battle. Look at the brave little guys. They're doing it. I mean, some of them are doing it. So they crest the hill and, and see that there's a horde of demonic frogs waiting for them. And then they're a bit like, um, maybe we should find alternative employments. And I think that would probably be a good idea. Okay, good. Could take the replenishment. There's not much money there, so let's... Oh, 215 infections. That's quite a lot. I think I'm going to take the replenishment, though. Can I take the replenish? Now, they're going to they're gonna hit Karak dumb, regardless of what I do. So let's do a little bit of... Uh, oh, if you run away. I mean, you are not really in any position to attack anything at this point. Even Stormvrak Mountain should be able to rebuff you. So let's go and take this fort. I'm tempted to water resolve it, and I also think that that would probably be a terrible idea because of the water resolve. So, oh, I love them like the blistering hordes of Nurgle. It's just oh, there's something about it. It's just stirs the heart. Taking out those towers, first and foremost. This is a, a Kislevite settlement. Currently inhabited by, of course, some ogres. It's already taken out some of the, uh, the ogre bulls. And as we advance on this position here, I should have moved a bit faster because they start building a barricade and they managed to block our path. No, they, they build a barricade, and I'm like, oh, uh, shit, guys, come on. But yeah, the, the, I think the barricade, like when they build it, it stops you, and then you have to give the order to attack again, and I didn't, I didn't notice, and uh, so my guys get stuck outside. It's not the end of the world. There we balls. Tanky boys, but really better on the charge. The Morn Fan Cavalry have very good stats, but again... More effective on the charge, uh, not when they're being mosh pitted by a horde of plague bearers, who of course have uh, pretty good stats themselves and a lot of weapon strength to really cut through that low armor. Which is unfortunate for them, really. Well, our Furies are pulling down some Noblars, but potentially could get trapped here, and I don't want them to get trapped by Noblars, because that would be probably bad. Furies are very, very fragile, so we're going to pull them out of that. Meanwhile, over here, we're attacking the Ogres as they come through the barricades. The barricades don't stop enemy units from coming through. No, they, they don't stop your units from coming through. They stop enemy units from going... So, basically, you... there you go. So, it doesn't affect you. If you build them, it affects the enemy who you're using them against. Good. Anyway, Soaker Balls being mosh pit. They've got some Noblars with them, which is helping soak up some of that damage. Still, they're quite, quite ponderous attacks. Looks like we've broken through Yep, all of the the Ogres and Mornfang cavalry fleeing. Another tower being constructed, and we're going to take that one down. You can see its uh, health is dropping very rapidly. So we push up. Usually my Nurgle settlement attack strategy is just grind the enemy down, and if you can capture some points, great. Basically, make for the points, but don't stress too much about it. Like, we're, not, we're not too worried. We can soak up the damage. It's fine.
The fact is, it, it sometimes looks like your army's taking a lot of damage, but because each of your units has a, so much health, that, to be honest, the vast majority of the time, you, you get away with um, taking a lot of damage very lightly, because it doesn't actually... Any unit that's... Say, say, you, say an individual Plague Bearer has 100 hit points. If that, if that individual Plague Bearer loses 99 hit points, at the end of the battle, he's still alive. So that means you get refunded... 99 hit points. So even if every single one of your plague bearers is on one hit points and your and your your general unit health is say at like 20%, 10%, at the end of the battle, that unit will be at full health again. So although the battles can look a bit messy, it tends to it tends to be that if you win, um you're absolutely fine. And it looks like the enemy garrison is starting to frown. I probably should have auto-resolved this, but I just don't trust the auto-resolve at the moment. And I don't have time or the resources to take damage. I'm going to have to spend several turns healing up. So we have to be careful. That'll do it. Now, it looks like Corn has lot. No, he's, did, did he? Oh, no, he took some... Okay, we're, we're at war with these guys, which is fine. They're over there, which is also fine. Uh, you guys. No? Okay. Is there anyone who does like me? Who likes me? The Tong. And you guys. You don't like me that much. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to distract you. Honestly, I was, I was just trying to... Trying to find some friends, to be honest. Uh, never mind. Right, okay, so we've taken that. You're not a threat anymore. You're going to get Karak done. But your army is mostly Noblar, so I'm not super concerned about that. That is not a major issue. I'm going to grab Evasion. How Kugarth evades, I don't know. I mean, equally, how he could be ever made, be made to... Hand-to-hand -hand combat is a lethal match of cut and thrust. However, it's not all about defensive strikes. Parries and other defensive moves can... What defensive moves would Kugarth have? Evasion. Those who just evade enemy attacks with ease and break from combat should feel... How? He's basically an oil tanker. I mean, he's oily, certainly. Uh, so, let's get let's get Blade Shields. And old Crow Botherer here is going to get... Uh, I don't know, Deadly Blades? Sure. Deadly Blades. Right, we're going to lose Karak done. That's fine. I'm okay with that. As long as we can hold on to our, our main settlement. I'm kind of... I must say that. I spent a lot of money on just fucking rebuilding the fucking building. So, uh, right, we're going to come down. We're going to deal with that. Once we've dealt with you, you are less of a threat. You've already riddled with uh, attrition damage and, and plague, so you're not going to be doing very much. And hopefully we can get this under control and then maybe secure the north up here, maybe deal with Zinch and then... Well, Cathay will probably declare war on us, but that'll have to wait until next time. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.